of Niger said it would welcome the deployment of weaponized U.S. drones to help in its battle against an unarmed Islamist threat and drug trafficking. Arise News contributor Frankie Dozian is here with that story and much more on what's going on in Africa. I, I think we just wanted that. We wanted that graphic that we usually put up, and they yeah, they didn't put they it up missed for some it, reason. But that's okay. It's good to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. However, a uh, very interesting situation in Niger. In Niger yeah, they yeah. like U.S. drones. They not only like them, they're encouraging them. You know, drones have been in Niger for a while now, but they have been unarmed simply for surveillance. And now the government of Niger is saying that they have a serious problem, not just with our cater fighters who were pushed out of Mali, but also with the drug trade, cannabis and cocaine and marijuana. And they're really saying, you know what? We are really, really happy to have armed U.S. drones come out and help us push those people out. This is a sea change from what has been going on on the African continent. Just a few years ago, people had said, we don't want a U.S. military base anywhere on the African continent. Now we have the Nigerian government saying, bring your armed drones and help us because we have a really big problem here. This is so interesting because Barack Obama's military footprint in Africa for a place that does not have a base is so huge. There are surveillance missions happening. There are supposedly cooperation missions happening, but the U.S. military is all over the continent right now. And yet AFRICOM the Africa Command does not have a base on the continent, mm -hmm. and this could be this could have interesting implications with uh, U.S. Africa diplomatic relations. Sure, continent wide. Sure, one of the things that's really really interesting is that we know what's been going on right next door to Niger with Nigeria with Boko Haram. We know what's been going on with Al Qaeda. If the drones start actually killing terrorists, that people may begin to feel differently because once drone strike starts, they're always innocent bystanders. Right now, it hasn't happened, but the invitation has been given. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, so let's move all the way down to the tip of the continent of Africa, down to South Africa. Oh, yes. This is a fascinating story. Incredible, so a, a white South African family decides to move into a township. Yes, but not just any white South African family. A very middle-class, very rich white South African family, Julia and Ina Hewitt, and they live in a gated community where they don't really see people if they don't want to. And they decided to move into a township. Now, what people need to know about townships is that townships are historically where like poor black people have lived in South Africa. And in South Africa, they are still this very, very sort of separate. I don't want to say segregated, but that's really what they are. They're very separate communities. Even poor white people don't live with poor black people. And townships are where like the people on the lowest end of the economic spectrum live. And the Hewitts decided to take their two kids and go and live in a shack for a month to see what it's like. Mind you, the whole month of August is the bitterest winter in South Africa. Mm. So it was not exactly like spending your summer over there. It was really in the middle of winter. They made friends. They said they weren't there for any kind of poverty tourism. They just wanted to see what it was like for themselves. But it proved to be very controversial. It did. People were on both sides of the spectrum very unhappy with them because people thought, are they doing this for a book or a reality show? Why are you trying to exploit poor people? Other people thought, well, look, Black people who are poor in South Africa, they only get any attention when a white person steps in. So that ruffled people the wrong way. Some people said on Twitter, I hope your stove burns your shack. You shouldn't be there. And even their own parents were like, why are you taking the children there? They don't need to see this. But they said, you know, where they live, their children don't see anybody. Their children for the month of August could run around the shacks and go and talk to people. But what they realized was that a lot of poor people in South Africa spend so much money on transportation. They try to live on the minimum wage, and all of that money went to just getting a bus to go to work. Mm -hmm. So it was really an eye-opener on so many fronts for people. Uh, on, on my visit to South Africa, I did visit a township, and it's some of the worst poverty that I've ever seen in my, my, in my life. And it was life-changing for me, and if yeah. it could be for that family, and they spread that to their community world, maybe it's worth the... the maybe it was actually worth it. I mean, they, yeah. they say that they, they themselves have changed, but they didn't really do this for anybody. They did this for themselves. All right. On a much lighter note, let's talk about, is it P-Square? P-Square. Peter and Paul. You know, these people have been singing love songs and have been superstars in Africa for a very long time, and now they're expanding into America. Unfortunately, they had a misstep in Washington, D.C. On their Facebook page, they posted things that were anti-woman and anti-gay and lesbian. So Nigerian advocates are on this campaign to get their visas revoked so that they can perform and give hate speech in different countries. We know we've seen this work with Jamaican dancehall artists who were against the LGBT community. And so we're hoping that P-Square takes a look at its success and takes a look at its responsibility and moves on from that. So far, they haven't apologized, so we'll see. Yeah, I gotta hope they just said it sort of off the cuff and didn't really mean anything malicious, but it has yeah. the effect no matter what their intention was. Sure, and you know, they haven't taken it down from their Facebook wall either. And so. that does tell you something. Okay, very quickly before we're out of time. Yes. So, uh, some of the million people have uh, used a very unusual way to communicate with the new president. Today is a good day in Mali. 
everyone's in Mali. African presidents are in Mali. The French president is in Mali. Ibrahim Boubacar Kaita is going to be inaugurated today. And musicians, you know, while Mali was under its Islamic um, separatist threat, there was no music. And now there's a lot of music in Mali, and musicians have come together to tell their president, we want to move forward. We want peace. We want no racial discrimination. And you're the one who's going to take us there. And we're making music to remind you of that after this joyful day. That's so, so neat and It cool. is Very, really, really special. There are young artists. There are old artists. Artists from all over the spectrum are singing and making music, but also sending a message that is more powerful than anything else that they've done. Recently. It's so cool. The country has uh, been under, you know, such crisis for so long. It's nice to have it on the upswing again. Yeah, a, a, a nice sense of optimism. Yes, absolutely. The, the, it's blue skies in Mali today. Blue skies in, <laughs> in, in, in Mali today. That's wonderful. And across Africa, really. <laughs> and do you think Bubakar Kaita is the one to do it, to take them forward? I really, really believe that he has a sense of a responsibility, especially in keeping his country together. There are still, you know, Tuaregs who want a separate country, and he has actually reached out and he's dealing with them. So he has a sense that this is an opportunity to turn a chapter in a very positive way. And so one believes, because he's also a technocrat, having been in government before, he knows how difficult it is to run a government, but he also knows the problems. One believes that he could be the one to really make a lasting change. That is good news. So it is now. hopeful. All right. I love it. We ended on a positive note. Thank yes, you. Debbie. Thank Many you more Happy years ahead. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you on Monday. Okay. Yes, absolutely. All right. And thanks to all of you for joining Arise America. We'll be right back here tomorrow on Friday. Have a great day.